Bad guys, bad guys. Bad guys, bad guys. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when the heroes get you? Bad guys, bad guys. Bad guys, bad guys. You can't get away. You can't get away because the hero saved the day. Hey, you bad guys. What's the matter with you? What do you think you're doing? You're not so smart. You can't run and hide. Not with heroes like these on the case. It's time you learned your lesson. And believe me, bad guys, this is for your own good. I'm here. As Babs Bunny used to say, another movie review with your old Uncle Padrino. Now, those bad, 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 bad boys that make some of you feel so good, right? I figured that. Now, bad boys, ride or die, the fourth installment of the bad boys franchise. So, um, let's get started with the story. Here's the story of a lovely lady. Uh, no, sorry, I got mixed up there in my mind, okay? Um, but, um, Mike and Marcus, they're doing their thing. They're, they're, they're up to their old shenanigans and up to their old tricks again and whatnot and doing what they always do with style, with flair, and with comedy. You know them, you love them, you don't want them to change, and that's what you're going to get with this, all right? With them as well, especially. Um, now, um, in the third, well, let me say this first. Uh, I don't think I'm spoiling this by saying this, by letting this out, uh, but... Uh, the the third movie, uh, Ride or Die, uh, not Ride or Die, but um, For Life, uh, it's been out for mm, around two years now, so you should have watched it by now, so I don't think I'm ruining anything by saying anything about this. But anyway, just in case, as Archer would say, spoiler alert, um, Captain Howard dies in the third movie, all right? Now, in this movie, uh, the Miami PD and the boys find out that Captain Howard was associated with the cartel. Um, and the boys aren't buying it, they don't like it, and they don't believe it. So uh, to honor his name and, and his memory, uh, they set out to clear his name. Uh, by doing so, they get roped into an adventure uh, with lots of action and comedy and things like that. And that's basically the entire story right there for the most part, all right? Um, there really isn't any more to it. Uh, they they are fugitives on the run. And, and I mean, you've watched the trailers. I'm not spoiling anything. You've watched the trailers. You've watched the commercials. The tagline is even here in the in the movie poster, all right? So I'm not spoiling anything by, by saying that, all right? But this is what you're getting in the movie, in the movie as far as the story goes, okay? Now, me personally, I was, I'm good with this. I'm happy about it. Uh, uh, I had a good time with this. Uh, it didn't bother me. Now, the, the story is somewhat predictable, but not completely predictable. But I mean, you've kind of seen this sort of thing before in the past, whether it's in TV shows or in other movies. So there aren't really any surprises here, unfortunately. All right. Uh, but uh, again, to me, that's a good thing. Uh, uh, it's the whole idea of keep it simple, stupid. Uh, well, well, keep it simple, stupid, but also uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So, and I think that's what made it more, even more enjoyable for me, all right, personally, all right? Um, there are some things about the story. I'm a kid of the 80s, okay? Um, and um, some of my teenage years were during the 90s and the, and a good chunk of my 20s was in during the 90s as well that those were times when you had a lot of buddy cop movies okay so you have movies like dirty ha well no no dirty, dirty harry is not a buddy cop movie but uh beverly hills cop uh beverly hills cop one and two uh, and, and all of the lethal weapon movies one through four uh so to me one of the best things about this movie is the fact that it does draw inspiration from those old buddy cop movies i mean there are some scenes with some characters that are set up to where you know and and, and it doesn't happen but they're set up some uh, uh in a way to where you know you expect a, a character or characters to react and say certain things at certain points i mean kind of like a police chief bursting through his office door bad boys in my office right now 
You're killing me, bad boys. Killing me. You're completely reckless. You cost millions of dollars in damages around the city. You got the witness killed who was supposed to testify against Mr. Falcon and Mike Hawk. And now the, uh, the, the, the mayor's on my back. I don't know how you learn to be cops, bad boys, but we do things by the book here. Got it? Now get out there and solve this case. Now, again, that doesn't happen. But it's almost there's a setup there. there, there there's one scene where, where I mean, even where the bad guy, you know, I almost expected him to look into the camera and go, I'll get you next time, bad boys, and I'm going to make you pay. You know, uh, and and there's also another scene with another character. I really did, expected them to like, there's this overhead shot and they're throwing their arms in the air and going, bad boys after getting defeated um but again none of that happens but it did kind of make me chuckle a little bit because i was kind of expecting that and almost in a way i almost kind of expected them to follow through with it but anyway um i look at the bad boys movies as different phases of the of 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 the of their lives both that of the actors and the characters okay um they're uh, Will Smith and, and Martin Lawrence are getting a little bit older now, uh, and the and so are their characters in the movies as well. And life is changing for all of them. And so I think if 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 they wanted to, they could end it right here if they wanted to. Now this movie doesn't set up for a sequel, and the third one didn't set up for this movie either. But I think they could probably squeeze out maybe one, maybe possibly two, two, two of them would probably be pushing it a little bit before they enter the territory of the Fast and the Furious movies, okay? And not that I have anything against the Fast and the Furious movies, mind you, but I think there is a such thing as ending on a high note and, oh, and overstaying your welcome, okay? And I think that's where the Fast and Furious, Furious franchise is right now. Uh, they're overstaying their welcome now, and, and it's probably time that it should end. With this franchise, like I said, they could probably squeeze out maybe one, maybe two, and end it. Uh, if they don't, they can end it here with the fourth one right here, all right, before they get into that territory, as I mentioned, all right? Now, let's talk about the actors, okay? Um, Will Smith, um, I admit uh, I lost some respect for him after the whole Jada, out of, after the whole Jada Pinkett, Jada Pinkett Smith debacle, and after the whole incident with Chris Rock at the Oscars, okay? Now, that doesn't mean that I don't still like him, but I did lose some respect for him. Um, in this case, you know, I can separate the, art in, separate the art from the artist, okay? And I think even in Will Smith's case, I think he needs to, he's been torn down now. Now he's going to have to build his way back up. And I think this is a good way to do it to start off with the Bad Boys uh, franchise to where he can start being taken seriously again and get more, uh, uh, get bigger and, and more serious roles again. All right. Now you may disagree with me and that's fine. I don't care. But that's how I look at it. But as far as Will Smith goes, he brings it as always. I mean, as Mike. He's calm, cool, collected, suave. I mean, he does everything with style. I mean, he's got lots of drip, as the kids would say. And, uh, I mean, you can't help but love him. And, and, and I mean, he's, he's just fantastic in this. I mean, perfect for the part. Okay? And same thing with Martin Lawrence. Martin Lawrence is, plays a straight man to Will Smith, the character. So, uh, Marcus. Um, but, uh, Marcus, I mean, Martin Lawrence, he's the opposite end. He brings the comedy. He, he, he brings the, the, I guess the, I guess it would be the Chucky factor. I would call it the Chucky factor, not Chucky the dog from Child's Play, but Chucky from Rugrats, who's always second guessing things and has doubt and whatnot. Um, he's bringing the comedy and he's, uh, bringing, you know, the, you know, the woo-sa and, you know, and also he's the one who's always getting hurt in some form or fashion as well, <laughs> unlike Mike. So, I mean, the two work extremely well together. The chemistry between these two are, is, is fantastic. It's, it, when you think about it, the first two movies directed by Michael Bay came out in the early 2000s, and these two movies that, that we have now 
um, directed by a duo. I can't remember their names right now off the top of my head. But it's during that span, it's been about mm, what maybe fifteen to twenty years now since they worked since uh, uh, Will and Martin worked together. And for the third movie, when they came back, it's it's almost like they they never missed a beat. They just picked up right where they left off, and like nothing happened at all between the two of them. I mean, it was like putting on an old pair of shoes, uh, comfortable shoes that you used to wear way back when and just feeling comfortable. And I think that's what's so great. That also adds to this movie as well, to the past two movies, actually. So I think I think that's one of the best things about this movie. The story is great. And again, not perfect, but Will Smith and, and Martin Lawrence, they're great as well together. Um, uh, the way they bounce off of each other, the way the quick whips and things like that. I mean, just awesome together, okay? All the other actors do their part and pull their weight as well. But overall, um, as far as this movie goes, I mean, I was satisfied. I got what I thought I was gonna get. I wasn't I wasn't uh, complaining. I wasn't unhappy about it or anything like that. I got what I wanted out of it. And I think you will too. Now, of course, it's a rated R movie, so you can't take the kids. I mean, this is going to be something that you're either going to watch by yourself or that you're going to go take your spouse and go watch with, with each other, okay? But, I mean, other than that, I mean, <laughs> that's all there is to this movie. It's pretty straightforward, in all honesty. I mean, it's nothing convoluted. It's nothing that, that is too so complicated that you had to go watch the first three movies. I mean, it kind of helps a little bit, but I mean, you don't, you don't have to watch the first three movies. You can jump in and, and watch this movie without any knowledge and I think get some enjoyment out of it. Um, I think it still helps, Jimmy, because, you, you know, to get to know the characters, I, that's probably the best reason to watch the first three movies as well and to get be caught up to an extent, okay? So... Um, there isn't a scene in the movie where, you know, where, you know, the chief, you know, hey, bad boys, you may be bad boys, but you're good cops. Glad to have you on the force. So, I mean, again, uh, there's not, there really isn't too much to say about this movie other than, uh, it's a good movie. My verdict, full price admissions. Okay. Um, and speaking, you probably can't see my shirt because they're down below, but here are the bad boys right here that I'm wearing. All right. So uh, that's it for me. And uh, Stan, take us out. That does it for this episode of the No Spoiler Show. And remember, if it's bad, it's good. And if it's good, it's bad. See you next time. Until then, Excelsior! That noble nincompoop He-Man got me again. Meh. Doesn't matter. I'll be out in less than 24 hours anyway. I usually am. Sometimes I'm out before the kids go to school. Sometimes I'm out by the time kids come home from school. Depends. City to city, state to state, country to country. It varies, you know. If I'm in here on Friday, I'll definitely be out of here by Monday, that's for sure. Some of us, though. They're in here for an entire week. Man, that's got to be rough. But they're definitely out by Saturday morning. You know, that's kind of how the schedule works. But that's how things run around here. Just got to take things one day at a time, you know? Yep. One day at a time. Meh. Nah.